Hello Year 7, welcome to Lesson 4. Hope you're okay, hope you're staying safe and hope you're hoping okay at home. So we're looking at velocity time graphs today and before we start you've got the option, you, all you need is either a piece of pen and a paper or a whiteboard to write on. If you've got the sheets from the uh, Show My Homework Prints off, brilliant. If you haven't, do not worry, it's all going to be in this PowerPoint. So again, all you need is a pen, some paper to write on or the, or the sheets if you've got them. So let's get straight into some retrieval practice. Your first slide's on the board now. So again, pause the video, off you go. So how did you get on? Okay, check your answers now. If you struggled, revise a little card. If not, let's move on to the next slide. So the next slide is separating mixtures again. Pause the video, off you go. So check your answers now. How did you get on? Again, if you need to pause the video and revise, do feel free to. And the final slide is on acceleration, last lesson's um, work. Again, pause the video, retrieve, off you go. So how'd you get on? Have a little look now. Again, check your answer. I'm sure this is fresh in the mind, should be really strong. Revise, make a revision card if you need to. And that is all for retrieval. So the end of last lesson, we did some you did some slot on acceleration it's 10 questions to answer here are the answers check them now how did you get on the last few were tough i spent a little time on those ones make sure i did them right as well go through them if you struggled and do message your teacher message myself and we'll come through them otherwise really well done great effort so far so today we're looking at velocity time graphs so i'm just gonna pull onto your sleeve slide here and this is the sheets that I made for you. If you haven't got this printed off, do not worry. Just make some notes for me and we'll go through them and you can write down somewhere, okay? So, velocity time graphs. It is very similar to distance time graphs, but this time, instead of the distance on the y-axis, you've got velocity. So it says here, the first question, what does a gradient velocity time graph tell you? It tells you the acceleration. So we need to be able to work this out. We'll do this later. Again, we are confident gradient. We've done it before, but it's reflecting on it. Number two, horizontal line. This tells us when something is traveling at a constant velocity. Okay, so if something is traveling at a constant velocity, it will have a horizontal line on a velocity time graph. The area on a velocity time graph tells us the distance travelled. So we can do a little bit of maths here and actually find out distance travelled from a velocity time graph. So those are the three key of knowledge there. Have a look at a graph and I put it into practice. So here's one that I made up for you. So again, the upwards line here, number one, okay, the journey between here and here, they are accelerating. So acceleration. Okay. If we look at the horizontal line, so you can see the accelerator got faster and faster and faster, and then it's leveled off here. Because the velocity is not changing, they are traveling at a constant velocity. So when you see a horizontal line, it is a constant velocity. We've got another upwards line here. So again, their velocity is increasing, so they are accelerating again. So we're gonna put here acceleration. Now, you hopefully may notice that this line is not as steep as this line, so therefore the acceleration is a bit slower. They're getting faster, but not as quickly as at the start. And finally, we've got a downwards line here. Now, you'll notice the velocity is getting slower and slower until eventually they've got no velocity. So actually, they are decelerating, so decelerating. Okay. So again, that are the four key things you need to know from a graph. And the final bit of new knowledge before we have a little break and embed this is actually calculating what is the acceleration in the first 10 seconds. Now, remember, acceleration is equal to the gradient. Now, if you remember back to our topic, to calculate the gradient, we do the change in y divided by the change in x. 
So therefore, if we look, velocity has gone from zero all the way up to 60. So the change velocity is going to be 60. The change in x is between zero and 10. So it's 60 divided by 10. So the answer, the gradient is 6. And because we know gradient equals acceleration, it's 6 metres per second squared. OK, so that is how you calculate acceleration from velocity time graph. So take a moment now, five or so minutes, embed your key knowledge. OK, pause the video, off you go. So the last thing I'm going to do with you, OK, I'm new, is doing a work example with you. So hopefully you have got this question is here, okay? Okay, question A. Now, if you haven't got it, you print off, do not worry. Just work with me on the sheet here. And it's I've got two questions to answer. And you'll notice it asks you, first of all, calculated deceleration and then distance travel. So these are the two skills you need to be able to take, take away from this lesson. So after I've gone through this, you're gonna have lots of practice on this, but let's do number one first, A first together. So it says, calculate the rate of deceleration between seven and 10 seconds. Now, if we look, here is seven and there is 10. So we can see they've gone from three meters per second all the way down to zero. So the change in velocity, okay, so I'm gonna write it over here. So change in velocity is equal to three, three to zero, and the time taken, so t, time is one two three now if you remember from last lesson the acceleration is equal to change in velocity divided by time acceleration will be equal to three divided by three so the answer is one meter per second squared so again you're doing the gradient using the equation it's stuff you've done before Right, this is a new bit here. So, calculate the distance travelled. Now, if you remember from our lesson, we said distance travelled is equal to area under the graph. Now, you can't calculate the area of that shape there. But what we can do is if we split this into two shapes, we've got a rectangle and a triangle, we can calculate the area of each of these because they're two unique shapes. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw out my two shapes over here. So do this with me. So you've got your rectangle and you've got your triangle. We'll do one at a time. So the rectangle, we can see along the bottom, it is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven seconds long. So I'm going to put here, it's seven seconds long. And it's also one, two, three high. So therefore, we're going to put a three there. And the area of rectangle, hopefully you don't know some math, is actually base times height. So three times seven. So the area of that rectangle is 21. And because it's distance, that's meters. Now the triangle, we do a similar process. Look at the bottom, it's one, two, three wide. So we're gonna put a three there. And it's also three high. But with the area of a triangle, don't remember, you do base times height but you divide it by two because you've only got the triangle. So therefore, three times three is nine, divided by two gives you 4.5 meters. So 21 meters to the rectangle, four and a half meters with a triangle. In total, the total distance traveled is gonna be 25.5 meters. Now, if you can walk away from this lesson and be able to do those two calculations, you have done superbly well. And again, once you've got into the maths, it's not too bad, it's just knowing what to do. And again, my top, top tip, when you practice this in a minute, split it up into triangles and rectangles or squares, and it makes it so much easier. So you, if you've got the slop sheet printed off, you are good to get started. Okay, if you haven't, I'll put them on the screen now for you. So, okay, there's your first slot question to have a go at. I'll go through them. So there's one, 
similar to what we just did. There's number two, have a go at that. So again, we're getting slightly harder as we're going along. Now I really make it a bit harder. So you've got number three, you've got four questions to answer there. Number four. And finally, we've got number five. And if you're feeling really up to it, number six. So you've got loads of questions to have a go at. Practice, 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 make really good go at it. And then let me know how you get on. Next lesson, we'll go through all of the answers together, making sure you're okay with them. Okay, I'm really, really checking you get this. And then we've literally finished the topic. So it's all about revision next time. So actually, practice these as much as you can and then next lesson, revise and make sure you're really confident on this. So on the floor then, do some more retrieval if needed. Okay, don't forget your, your recall test. Hopefully you've done your first one or your second one online now. Complete a slop I've just shown you, and also share a video of other pre -tenders. So, have a lovely day. See you soon. Thank you for listening.